Director Manager for Hornbill. I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining today's webinar. We'll be learning about getting the most out of Hornbill reporting with your presenter Steve Goldport, Application Developer. Just to inform you, the delegate audio will remain muted during the presentation to help facilitate flow and timekeeping. If you do have any questions during the presentation, please go to the go to meeting question facility on the right hand side of your screen. We'll collate all the questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend. I will now pass you over to Steve. Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to today's Hornbill Academy session on support works reporting. So today we're going to look at a number of methods of retrieving useful data and metrics from your support works applications, both in the traditional reporting sense as well as other ways to quickly retrieve your data. So what we're actually be covering today will be system reports, so that's the uh, built-in report creation wizards. Uh, we're going to look at custom HTML reports, and these are a number of pre-built ITIL-based reports written in PHP primarily. And we're going to look at database searches, so this is where the client allows SQL statements to be ex executed from the SupportWorks client, and how these can be presented to the search menu and the client for ease of access. So, from the top, we'll have a look at system reports. Uh, we're going to look at the SupportWorks reporting engine uh, and how you can use wizards to quickly and easily report on the data held in your SupportWorks applications. So system reports can be broken down essentially into two categories. You've got basic reports, which can either be run manually, as and when you need their output, or they can be scheduled to run and deliver their output automatically, either by email or as a file drop onto a UNC path or to an, uh, up to an FTP host. Uh, the other type of report are runtime prompt reports. So these uh, type of reports prompt for input when um, they're run, and for that reason they obviously cannot be scheduled. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the reports, and we're going to create a couple of system reports and hopefully help you get the most out of your data. So we'll go to support works, uh, management information and reporting. So when we look at the out-of-the-box system reporting view, we see a folder structure uh, contains a number of folders and the reports and other folders are contained within these. So if we take a look at one of the reports, if you single click on a report, and you're presented with some useful information about that particular report. So at the top of the page, you get the report configuration, which tells you the name of the report, the data dictionary that the report will be visible within, and the table where you're getting your data from, how the data is going to be grouped and graphed, and the criteria, which is essentially the SQL statement that's going to be applied, and the template that was used to build the original report. Underneath that, we've got the report run history, which essentially shows you every time that that report has been run um, for admin purposes, and we've got who it was run by and how long the report actually took to run. Um, that one is actually quite an important column because if you create a report that takes uh, a long time to report to run, um, because of complexity in your SQL statements or many joins, um, that can actually have an adverse effect on your support work service. So um, always make sure that your SQL statements are optimized and your time taken is nice and short. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to create a new folder within System Reports um, to hold some reports that we're going to create. So if you right click on System Reports and click on New Folder, uh, we'll give the folder a name, we'll call it Hornbill Academy. Okay, you can see the folder is now created there, ready to put some reports within. And we're going to look at creating a value counter report first of all. So you right click on the folder where you're going to pop in the report and click on new report. And you get the new report template dialog box that pops up now and shows you the type of report templates that you can select. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a report to show us um, all open calls that are going to be grouped by priority. And so this is essentially going to show us uh, the numbers of calls that are currently open within your SupportWorks applications um, with uh, groups by priority, so you can see which calls are the most important. So if we select a value counter report and click OK, and this brings up the Choose Tables dialog box. Now on the left hand side you can see all of the application data tables within your SupportWorks applications. Uh, the right hand side is your selected tables pane, so when you select tables in available tables and you click the Add Table button, it moves the table across into selected tables. Now, we've got a couple of field, uh, couple of radio buttons up at the top. We've got SQL database names and user-friendly names. If you click on each of these, um, it displays exactly the same tables, but when you click user-friendly names, it goes off to the data dictionary that you're logged in as and pulls the 
the more friendly display name for the table. But in this instance, we're going to use the SQL database names because we need to know which the uh, tables are. We're going to be taking our data from the open call table um, because that's the table that holds most of your call record information in your SportWorks applications. So I'll select the table, click Add Table. You can see it's moved across into Selected Tables. So we'll click Next. Now this um, presents the Choose Columns dialog box. On the left hand side you can see all of the available columns that are within the open call table. Uh, the right hand side is the selected columns. Now because we've chosen a value counter report, we can only select one available column because that's what we're going to be grouping by. So we're going to be grouping by priority. So the field that holds the priority of calls in an open call is open call priority. So you select the, the column, click on this button here to move it across. And we can see that the columns moved over into the selected columns. If we try and take across another column, because it's a value counter report in the report template, we've got a maximum number of columns as one, so it doesn't allow us to move them across. So if we click next, this brings up the filter results dialog box. Now this um, is essentially where you enter your SQL where clauses. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either write your where clause manually, or you can use the where builder. So in this demonstration, we're going to use the where builder to add some clauses to our, our uh, SQL statements. So if we click on new clause, you can see that the where builder has been activated underneath. So what we're going to need to do is because this report that we're building, we basically want all open calls. So we're going to need to apply a call status filter. So if we go to open call status, which is there. So the column we're going to be getting the data from is open call status. It's going to be equal to, it's going to be less than. Um, call status is in um, support works. Anything under a less a status of 16 is essentially an open call, aside from status of 6, which is a resolved call. So we want all calls which are less than a user-defined value of 16. Enter your value into there. Click on Add. It takes your value across. And if you click Apply Edit, you can see that the clause that we've just built has been applied into the SQL where statement. So we've got where open call that status is less than 16. Now because we want to return open calls, we also want to filter out any call that's in a result status. So that's a status number of 6. So if we click on new cause, we're looking at open call status again. And we're going to have is not equal to a user defined value of 6. We'll add that value and apply the edit. And you can see that next clause, clause has been applied to the SQL statement. So this report will return all calls that have got a status of less than 16, so calls that are open, and have got a status that isn't 6, which is the result cause. And if we click on next, uh, this brings up the grouping and sorting dialog box. So we can see uh, a couple of options in here. The options are limited with value counter type reports because there's not a great deal of uh, data you're returning. Um, we can sort by column name in this instance, so we'll sort by the priority to be ascending, and we're going to apply a summary graph of priority, which we'll, uh, we'll have a look at in a, moment, in a moment. And we click on next. This takes us to the report options dialog box. So in this plane, uh, we need to enter a name for the report. So the name of our report is going to be all open calls groups by priority. So that's the name of the report that's going to appear in the report browser and at the top of the report configuration page. So we need to also apply a title for the report. Now the title for the report is what appears on the report once all the data has been um, collated and presented. We'll just give it the same name in this instance. Oh, calls group by priority. Um, the report options, as I say, because it's a value counter report, is limited. We've just got one option, which is making graphs editable, and we'll leave that as it is. The data dictionary field, we've got a pick list here that shows all the data dictionaries, so they're the, exact, the, the applications in your support work server that the report should be visible within. So we're going to make this ITSM, because we're currently locked into the ITSM application, and we only want ITSM users to be able to see this report. And we're also going to give the report a theme. These are uh, CSS style sheet themes with images. Um, you can use either one out of the box, or you can create your own if you've got CSS skills. Uh, we'll choose the support works one in this instance. Uh, if we click Finish, the report is then built for us and takes us to the, um, the overview page for that particular report. 
So as you can see, we've got the configuration, we've got the theme information, we've got the data dictionary, we've got the table where we're going to be getting the data from, ordering and grouping the information, we've got graphing information and the criteria that's going to be applied to the SQL statement. And obviously we've not got all the history because we've just created a report. So if we run that report now, we can see uh, quite a lot of information has been returned. We've got all of the, it's a list of all of the priorities that I've got currently got open calls against them. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see there's quite a lot of stuff in there. Uh, if you notice, we can actually see some HR information. So we're returning calls from all of the applications within uh, within your support web server, which probably isn't what we want to be doing at this point. So what we're going to need to do is go back into the report and apply an additional filter to get rid of calls that haven't been logged within the ITSM application. Now to do that, if we go back into the report, right click and go properties, you get the report properties pane with a number of tabs across the top. We want to go to the filter results tab, so we can see the, yeah, the web clauses that we created previously. We're going to need to add a new clause to this, so we'll click on the new clause button. Now, whenever you log a call within your support works application, there is a field in the open call table called app code. Now that essentially holds the reference or the name of the application that the call was generated in. So for this instance, uh, we're in the ITSM data dictionary or application, so all calls logged within this data dictionary will have an app code of ITSM. So we need the left column to be app code within open call. It's going to be equal to, and again we're going to provide a user defined value, and the user defined value is going to be ITSM. So we add that to there, and we're going to apply the clause, and we can see the clause has been applied by nicely up at the top. So we've got calls that are in an open status, and they've got an application code of ITSM, so they've been generated in this application. If we click OK, and then we refresh that page, we'll say there's still quite a lot of information in there, but it's less than what it was. So we may even want to filter this report down even further. Um, so for instance, if I'm a change manager, and I want to see all change, uh, all calls of a change class that are open and grouped by priority, so you can see how many P1 changes you've got currently open in your system, we can apply an additional filter to that report. So if we right click the report, click properties, filter results, we're going to add an additional clause, so we're going to filter essentially by the class of the call. Now change request call class is just change request, so we'll just choose open call call class. So if you log a change request within your support works applications, the value of call class will be change request. If you log an incident within your support works applications, the value of call class will be incident and so on. So call class is going to be equal to, again we're going to have a user defined value of change request. We're going to add that value, apply the clause and you can see that the clause has been applied to the SQL statement. So we've got all open calls that have been created in ITSM and are of type change request. So if we OK that and refresh again, we can see the data is filtered even further. So we're actually seeing now all calls that are open within support works in the ITSM application that are change requests and the groups by priority. Now, when you see the, the chart at the top of the report, um, because of the length of the priority field on, these, uh, on this application, we can see most of it is being cut off. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change that chart to make it a little bit more readable. Now to do that, you just do a single click on the chart, and that takes you to the chart constructor. Now here you can change uh, a number of things about the chart. You can change the size uh, of the chart itself. You can change the canvas that it's going to be written to. You can change the margins. You can change the number of the colors. But in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to make the chart a little bit bigger, um, so we can start seeing things on there. So we'll check the canvas size. 800 should be enough, 400, um, make the chart size a little bit smaller so it fits within the canvas, a little bit larger on the, uh, the y-axis, and obviously we need to change the margin here because we really can't see any of the priority names, so we'll increase that quite substantially, 350 should do it, and then down at the bottom of the chart constructor you've got a couple of buttons, if we click on the update button, and the chart will update and display how it should be viewed. So this is how it's going to now view the chart on the uh, on the support work report. So 
When you click save, um, the information that you've changed there will be written back up to the support work server, so anybody who accesses that report in the future will have a correct view of the chart. They obviously don't need to do that every time themselves. So we'll click save, it'll take us back to the report and we can see a nicely formatted chart with result data output um, showing us exactly um, how many calls of each priority are currently open uh, as change requests. Okay, so that's uh, essentially the first report. A couple of other things that we can actually do with the reports is we can apply um, time variables. And what I mean by that, if we go back into the report properties and go to the filtering, um, there are a couple of functions and contact variables that are uh, accessible uh, and within support work reporting and other areas of the application. So these are basically variable names that you can enter to your reports so that you can specify um, particular dates. Um, for instance, I'll just write one out now. So we're going to change the report so we can see all calls, all open calls grouped by priority that were logged in 2014, say. So we're going to manually add uh, another clause on here. So we're going to put and Open call at log date text. Log date text is an epoch. It's an integer field within open call that holds an epoch value um, for the date and time of when the call was actually logged. Is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. So uh, obviously we don't want to be calculating that epoch value every time when we put in a report in. So that's why we can use these uh, these functions. So open call at log date equals the function we're going to be looking for is underscore sw for support works underscore time and then open some brackets up to put the, the variable in and the string variable that we're going to be using here because we're going to get all the calls from to, that were logged in 2014 so SW time starts of last year and we're going to want to bookend that as well so and open call dot one date x is less than so open call that log date x is less than underscore s w underscore time open brackets end of last year close the brackets so essentially what this this sql statement is going to return is all of, all calls from open call that are currently open that have been logged within the itsm application have got a call class of change requests and they were logged in between the start of last year and the end of last year. So we be okay there. And then refresh the report, we should see some less data in there now. So the the entire of last year, there was four calls logged without our change request that are still open in the system. And you can see from that we've got um, a P1, uh, a service deliver, and we've got two P3 standards. So that's um, system reports, what we'll do is we're going to create another one. Um, well, before we do that, we shall have a look at scheduling the report. Because this report is essentially a basic report, and when we run the report, we do not ask the person who's run the report for any runtime value, so they're not asking to be putting anything into the report to get anything out, we can schedule it. So if you right click on the report and click schedule report, we get a new scheduled job and um, dialog box up here. Now, this has got a number of tabs across the top, and we've got a number of settings that I'll just go through quickly. So on the report, report format tab, and it tells you how you can send the report, or the format that the, the data should be sent to. So you can either have it as a, an MHT file, which is a, an encoded HTML file, uh, or you can um, bundle all of the report content um, into a zip file. So that will be the HTML aspect, it will be the CSS aspect, it will be any images. So the chart itself is an image which is embedded into the HTML, so it will put a line as it file and drop it wherever you want it. But in this instance, we'll use an MHT file because it's a one click and most browsers can open that. If we have a look at the report delivery options, um, we can say we can send the report either as an email to the a number of recipients, we can report, uh, write the report to a file on the network, so you put your UNC in there with the file name, or we can write it to an FTP server, so you put all the FTP server details in and it will build the report, drop it in whatever format on the FTP. Now, in this instance, we're going to send the report. So I'll click the send to button and then choose something from the address list to actually send the email to. In this instance, we'll send it to Steve Robinson. 
So Steve, the change manager, he's going to get this report. He wants this report sent in every morning. So we'll change the subject. This is the email subject and the email body. So changes by priority. So Steve's going to get an email with that as the subject. This is the message body, um, and it'll have an MHT file attached to it, which is uh, all the report content. If we have a look at the schedule tab. You can specify um, when the report should be sent to Steve. Um, Steve's decided he wants the report every day, so we're going to specify it to be run once a day. We're going to start the report tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. And Steve decided he wants it every day of the week, aside from Saturdays and Sundays, because he doesn't work those days. So we're going to run the report Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 8 o'clock, starting tomorrow, once a day. We're going to run it indefinitely because he doesn't want the report to stop. And the last half was a couple of format settings. We've got the data dictionary that we're going to be pulling the um, certain um, outputs from. So whenever you're reporting on um, tabulated data, so report records from um, the upper cot table, for instance, it will get the formatted information from the DITSM data dictionary if that's what you've got selected there. Um, time zone, self-explanatory, predefined format is the character sets. We leave that as custom settings, that's fine. And the date time format is if you want to override the date time format for any date time fields that are being provided to the report. So if we click OK on that one, we can see an expand button has been added next to the report that we've just scheduled. So if we click on that, we can see the schedule that we've just created. So we've got scheduled report job number four. If you right click and click properties, you get back to the properties pane where you can make changes to the settings. So if Steve decides he only wants to report Monday, Wednesday, Friday, take the ticks out there, click OK, and then that's applied immediately. So that's scheduling reports. Um, what we'll look at now, we're going to create another report um, with some runtime arguments. So we'll get the person who's running the report to actually give us some input to present the output. Right, the report I'm going to create is essentially going to be all calls logged by a particular company. So, for instance, if you're a managed service provider, um, you may want to have a look at how many calls have been logged, or the exact number of calls and details of those calls that a particular company has logged in a particular time frame. And for that, we're going to use a report type of simple list. And then again, we've got the tables form. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a couple of tables here, because we want data out of um, the open call table for the call data. And we're also going to want to report on data from UserDB. Now, UserDB is a table within SupportWorks that holds all of your customer records. So we'll choose Open Call first of all. And we'll have the table. Now we'll navigate down to UserDB. As you can see, because it's a simple list type report, we can actually add multiple tables, as many as you want in there. So we'll click Add Table, and then we get the Join Tables dialog box up. Now this allows us to join the tables for the reporting purpose. It essentially adds a uh, join clause to your SQL statement that's going to be generated when the report runs. So we're going to do a left join. We're going to pull some information from UserDB with open call as the main table. So automatically it populates left join. We're going to add a new clause. What we need to do here is we need the primary key from UserDB in this instance, which is key search. And it's going to be equal to the customer ID field within open call so that we can connects your call table with the user table on the customer's unique identifier. Now, the field in open call is cust underscore ID, which is there. So key search is going to be equal to customer ID. So if we apply that edit, we can see the clause is built up at the top. So we're going to left join user DB table to open call on user DB dot key search equal open call dot cust ID. If we OK that, we can see that both tables are then listed in the selected tables pane. And if we move on to the next tab, the Choose Columns dialog box appears again. And because we're using a simple list, we can pick as many of these columns to display uh, as we want. So what we'll do is we are going to output uh, some of the, uh, the fields from, user, uh, from open call as well as user DB. So some of the more uh, common ones, we've got call ref in open call, which is the call reference field. Um, the call class would also be useful, so that's whether it's a service request or an incident or a change request, etc. So we'll have the call class field. So 
So I'll highlight the column and then click the greater than sign to move it across. And we'll take the log date because log date is always useful when we're reporting. As you can see in this list, we've got two log date fields. We've got log date and we've got log date text. Now log date is a nice old string date time formatted field, so that's just the plain text essentially. And we've got log date text, which again is the epoch field, so that's the number of seconds since the first of January 1970 since the call was locked. So we'll add that one to it. And the reporting engine is clever enough to work out from the data dictionary settings that log date text is a date field and it will format it accordingly. So we're not just going to get a number output there. Uh, we're going to take a couple of other fields. Um, what we'll do is we'll take open call company name. Now obviously we're reporting on the company name, but we don't particularly um, want to display it because they're all going to be from the same company. So when you're on a field, you can actually mark it down as not visible. So that won't appear on the report, but it'll be available um, in a couple of things further on, which we'll go through later on. Um, we're going to add a couple of things from UserDB as well, a couple of fields. We are going to want to know who the customer is, so we'll add the full name field. Um, we're going to want to know the department that our customer works in, so we'll take across the department. And we're going to want to know the job title, so we can see whether uh, what type of job the person um, has that right, logs these particular codes. So you can see that we've got a number of fields that we're going to be presenting. So we'll click on the next, and it takes us to the filter again. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a couple of runtime filters to this report. So the first one that we're going to add is going to basically return us the calls that are logged between two dates that are provided at runtime. So we're going to add a new clause. We're going to add a column of log date x. And log date x is going to be between a runtime prompted value. So we're not entering the user-defined values anymore because I've hard code some dates in there. We're going to allow the, uh, the end user to actually enter their dates themselves. So we'll have this prompt. Now that takes us to the prompt properties dialog box. Now within this dialog box, you've got a, a number of options. Again, we've got the SQL database names and user friendly names. You'll see that across the application. And we've got the prompt type. If we select the prompt type, then because this is an integer field, this log date x, and the prompt type becomes a date range or a number range. Now what we need is a date range. We're going to add a prompt text which is going to appear on the report. So please answer range to report on. The label is going to be the one that's actually next to the field themselves. So we'll put the date range in there. And we'll click OK. And that will actually build the, um, the clause now when we click apply a date. So we can see the first clause that we've added to this SQL statement is where opencall.logdatex is greater than, and then we've got an argument name there. So rather than hard coding and putting some dates in manually like we have with the other ones, we're letting the um, user specify their own start dates and end dates, which are these arguments here. So now, because we want to be filtering by um, company name as well, we're going to add another new clause. So the open call field that we're going to be looking at is a company name. And this is going to be equal to, again, a runtime prompted value. This means that we can add a prompt, which is going to be a database pick list. Now, the database pick list means that when you run the report, the database pick list will be populated from the database rather, from, rather than from a list that you provide as part of the report. So I'll just put a prompt text in there again. Um, a company label company name. So the database table we're going to be populating this pick list from is going to be company. And the table column, this is what's going to be output um, to the pick list. So we're going to use the company name column. In there, that's not in order. And if we click OK, um, before we go on to that, you can actually apply additional filters to this pick list as well. So if there was a certain companies that you didn't want your um, staff to report on, you could put a SQL filter in there to, to remove them, but we won't do that in this season, it's all documented. So if we click OK and then click apply edit, you see we've got another argument there, which is open call.company name equals, and then we've got this argument, 
So this is another runtime argument which is going to be provided by the person who runs the report. So the company name is going to match something from that database pick list. Uh, and of course we're going to need another clause on there, so we're only seeing data from our application. So we're going to use open call app code again. It's going to be equal to, and this time we will use a user defined value because it's going to be hard coded. It's going to be ITSM. So if we click out and apply the edit, we can see that's the, the, the SQL query that we're going to be running. So it's going to be all calls that will log between specific dates with a company name of what's being provided by the person who's running the report and that have been logged in the ITSM application. So if we click next, it takes us to the grouping and sorting page again. Now you can see we've got a few more options in this one um, than we had previously. We've got a number of um, fields that you can um, sort by. So we've got everything essentially from the uh, open call and user DB that we've selected. What we're going to do is we're going to sort by call reference. And the summary graph option, it doesn't select one by default because there's more than one field available in the columns. So we will select call class. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run this report and it will generate a summary graph, uh, basically which will be a breakdown of calls by call class. So you can see how many service requests, how many incidents, how many change requests, etc. that this company has logged. So I'll click on next, that takes us to the report options. Now we've got a few more options in here to go through. So we'll give the report a name first of all. So this is going to be calls logged by company. And we're going to give it a title. Again, the title is what's displayed after the report has run. So you run the report, the person who runs the report will provide some inputs and then the title will be the one that appears on the next page. Now because of that, we're going to put, add some additional arguments to this to make it a little bit to make it look a bit nicer. So you've got some more relevant information in that title. So we're going to call it cause log by. Now, we could put company in there, but that wouldn't mean a great deal to the title. But what we can do is we can take the argument from here, so the company argument, including the ampersand and the square brackets, take a copy of that, and we can pop that into the title. So when the report runs, where it says UVR2, we shall have, or we should have, the name of the company. And we can also do that with a date field, so between take that argument there. And that argument there. So then the uh, the title will be populated dynamically. Again, if we want to write this um, report to be only visible in our data dictionary, you select the data dictionary field, and then we'll give it a theme as well, which is the support works theme again. Now, the report options, we've got a few more in here. They're all self-explanatory. Um, what we do need to add, though, in this instance, is we're going to enable the filter. So this enables us, after the report has run and we've got some data, uh, is to further filter that data to our needs as well. We'll go through that once the report's done. So we'll enable that and click Finish. And we'll see the report is now generated, added to the folder that we've tried to create it in, and we'll get all of the config listed here. So when we run the report, you'll see that we actually get some runtime um, requirements now before we actually return any data. So these are the, um, the arguments that we've, we've selected as part of the wizard. So basically, we want all calls. We'll take calls from last year. So from the start of last year to the end of last year, you can see this text here. And this text here is all dynamically generated from the wizard. It's the stuff that we added as part of the, as part of the wizard. Uh, we're going to select the company to report on as RS. So we'll click on the report now. And the report's generated. So this is report returning all calls logged by RS Computer Services between the 1st of January last year and the 31st of December last year. Um, what we get is we get the, the chart output, which, as I said, we um, sorted by or grouped by the call class, so we can see at a glance the number of service requests, incidents, change requests, etc. that this um, organization has logged with us. And we have a filter bar up at the top, which allows us to filter the raw data that's underneath uh, even further. We have the raw data that's output, um, which was selected as part of the report wizard. And we've got an overall total count down at the bottom, so we can see that this company has logged 36 records with us last year. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at the filtering on this one. So if you wanted to drag that down into, um, we'll look at 
who was caught there, calls that were logged by a particular customer. So we've got Alan here that's logged a couple of calls, but we just want to return Alan's calls. So if you put the, the filter in there and apply the filter, you can see the report automatically generates the data uh, uh, with the filter that you've applied. So this now shows us all the calls that Alan logged with us um, from that organisation between those dates. Uh, you can further filter that as well, you can apply as many filters as you want in there. So we just want to say change requests. That will look by Alan last year. We can apply the filter and we can see that Alan logged just the one change request last year. And obviously if you remove the, the strings from the filter fields and reapply the filter, the filter is removed. And the titles as well, if you want to search by, uh, so if you want to order by any of the other columns, so you just click on the column title and it will order it appropriately. So that essentially is system reports. There's uh, obviously lots of data there. You can you can go and have a play with those reports. You can create your own reports. Obviously, the reports that we provide are also editable, so you can go across and change those. And um, the details that we spoke about regarding the context variables, um, they're all available on the community portal on the community portal. So that's at community.hornwell.com. So if you visit that um, that site and go to the document viewer, you've got all of the support work documentation in there. If you just do a search in there for context variables, then it will bring you back the documentation that you need. So that's system reports. Um, what we're going to talk about now are custom HTML reports. Now these type of reports are completely different. They are reports that have been written in PHP by developers, either developers from Hornbill or developers within your own organization if, if, if you've built any reports yourselves. Um, if you're an ITSM customer, then you get a number of reports provided to you as part of your support works application installation. Um, they usually written these reports um, when the calculations or data transformations for a report are more uh, complex than what's possible within the system reports wizards. Um, so if you've got something that uses lots of joins and it needs calculations within the um, SQL statements, then you're not going to be able to do that within system reports. You need to get a custom HTML report to do that for you. Um, also, there's no concept of data trending, so trending over time within system reports. For instance, if you want to know the number of calls that were logged each month for the past 12 months, you'd have to do a report for each particular month. You wouldn't be able to run a report and it will show you how many calls were logged in January, February, March, etc. Um, but we can do that in custom HTML reports because it's all PHP generated. So if you've got a report requirement that you're unable to provide within the system report wizard, then it is possible that we've already provided one for you within custom HTML reports. Um, the, we do have quite a large number of reports that get provided as part of the application installation. And as I said previously, if there isn't one in there, if you can't find one that meets your needs, then if you've got a PHP and SQL skills in house, you can write it yourself. Or if you need us to write one for you, then we can do that for you as well. Our client services team could write that report for you, but obviously there would be a cost incurred in that. Um, one other restriction for the custom HTML reports is they cannot be scheduled to run themselves. So there's no scheduler for the custom HTML reports. Again, if you're a PHP developer, um, then custom HTML report generation and delivery can be fairly straightforward depending on the complexity of the report. Um, but there are APIs uh, and a scheduler service within SupportWorks that you can use to send emails from. Um, so if you've got a developer in-house that's, that's confident in doing that, then you can write your own reports in-house that way and schedule them that way. So what we'll do is we'll have a couple of the, I'll look at a couple of the reports that we've provided for you. Uh, we'll look at the ones within ITSM. Um, knowledge base is probably a good place to start because uh, it's a little bit difficult to report on knowledge base use within the system reports. So Go into ITSM and Knowledge Base. You'll see when you single click on the report, you don't get the overview like you do in the System Reports tool. Um, that's because um, the reports are PHP, there's no um, real interaction, there's no wizard to create these reports, so there's no point in providing any data on them. So if you run the report, 10 most accessed articles. This shows you the articles that are most accessed within your SupportWorks Knowledge Base uh, and some information on there and how useful they are. So you can see in this list here, we've got the same support work server communication port on this particular server has been accessed 109 times. It's 75% relevant uh, according to your customers who are actually accessing the knowledge base document, and it's fixed the customer's problems 50% of the time. So that's great, so it's a good article, a good point to go from. 
You see this one here, Excel 2007 has been accessed 44 times, um, but it's never fixed any of the problems and it's completely relevant to, to the issues that people are searching on. So your yeah, knowledge manager can look at this report then, this customer HTML report, and say, right, that one's not doing great, we'll need to either amend the keywords against that knowledge base article or get it completely rewritten and make it more relevant to the issues that people are uh, experiencing. And there's another, a couple of other art um, knowledge base article reports in here that you can run. Um, the most useful articles, and this data is a little bit limited on this test server, but you can see what's happening here. Change bank details is the most useful, it's fixed 100% of the problems. These useful articles, Excel 2007 again, it's fixed 0% of the problems. And the articles that are run, uh, that have been accessed the least. So you've got all these articles down here that have never been accessed. Um, so check your creation date and then go and have a purge if they're not, not particularly useful. Uh, we've got some other ITIL type reports. If we have a look in the incident folder, um, we have the top 10 affected CI, uh, top 10 affected CIs. Now this will return a list of CIs that you've got stored in your support works application that have had the most amount of calls logged against them. So if we return 10 records and submit that, obviously you can filter these reports even further, you can um, apply um, logged on and between filters, organization site, etc. So you can you can filter your data down even further. In this instance, we've not got a great deal of data on this box, so we'll click on submit report. And we get a, a nice chart and some um, CI names being returned to us. So we can see that the, the network CI uh, in the time frame that we're reporting on has had 10 calls logged against it. Uh, we've got a PC down here that's had five calls logged against it. Uh, if we click on the, the plus sign next to the config item name, we can drill into the data even further. So then that returns a list of the calls that have been um, logged against that particular CI. And obviously you can then start clicking on these and it'll take you to the call details and, and so on and so forth. You can go back and it brings you back to the report. Um, if we take a look at the couple of the service requests, we'll look at total cost by service. So this is a useful report if you um, if you charge for services and you do costings against your services, we can actually see how much it's costing your company to provide particular services. So again, we'll just leave the, the criteria blank, but we'll return all call data. Submit the report, and we can see we've got a number of services here that have had calls logged against them, and how much these services have cost your company in that particular time frame. The other one to look at here, we've got the new starter service. We've had 25 calls in that time frame logged against it at a cost of just shy of £16,500. So we can expand on that data even further. We can see who's owned their particular calls. So we can see these, these are SupportWorks analysts. This feed black call is a SupportWorks analyst who has owned 21 of the calls. Uh, at a cost of £14,050. And then you can drill even further down into that data to see the call details, when it was logged, and you can also see obviously the customer details and how much that particular call cost things. So if you've got um, services that have got um, multiple items against the service that cost different, amount, different amounts of cash, then you can see that this call here costs just over £1,000, this call was just under £750. So you can Break down your uh, your costings quite nicely with that report. Um, as I said, the the custom HTML reports they're not always driven; they're um, written in PHP. So if you do want anything creating, then either we can do it for you at cost, um, or if you've got PHP and SQL skills in house, then you can you can build them reports yourself. So um, that takes us nicely onto the last area that we're going to cover today, which is database searches. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the database searches entity within SupportWorks allows your users to build and execute their own SQL statements and output their tabulated data accordingly. So if we have a look at the database searches area, um, we have a custom, a custom search manager where we can build our own SQL statements. So we've got none in there at the moment, so what we'll do is we'll just create a SQL statement. So new. Uh, when you click on new button, you get the search properties, so you can add a query name and the actual SQL statement that you want to run against your database. Um, so we'll give this one, we'll say we'll return all calls that were logged by me in 2014 as, a, as an example. So, calls uh, logged by me last year. Okay, and uh, we'll give the query as, it has to be a full um, SQL query, but as I said, we can use variables in here, which I'll, I'll show you how we do. So I'll select, and uh, these are going to be a number of columns from the open call table. So I'll select column F and then custom. 
name, which is the customer name field. Company name, which is the company name field. And um, log date x, which is the log date field again, which will be translated. Um, and status. From the table one in front, which is open call. Where, and again, we're going to be pulling data for specific log, uh, specific dates for when the calls were locked. So log date x is greater than um, and square brackets. Now, because we are in inputting variables in the database searches um, entity, we don't need to use the underscore sw underscore time function. That's just for the reporting engine. So in here, we just need to put, uh, we just need to mark the, the string as a variable, which is done in most areas of support works with an ampersand and a, and a pair of square brackets. So I'll start of last year. And log data is less than, again, ampersand square brackets, end of last year. Close the square brackets. And we want to be filtering, so we just want to return calls that are logged by me. So we've got ITSM is the username that I'm currently logged in as. So log by equals ITSM. So this will report, this um, SQL query will return all calls that were logged by me in the entirety of last year. So now if I OK that, you can see that the, the query is now presented to the um, searches. And oh, we've got an error message. Um, select call ref. Ah, you can see where the error is there now. So we've missed out on that one. So select call ref plus then comes rename log data text status from open call where log data text is greater than the start of last year and is less than the end of last year and log by equals ITSM. If we OK that one and retry the run, it'll return a number of items for us. So I logged 40 items, 40 calls in the entirety of last year. So if that's a, a SQL query that you access regularly and you always want to be running that and you don't want to be bothered with coming into database searches and launching it and you don't want to run a report to get information out, you can actually add these database searches into the search menu up at the top of your client. So to do that, if you edit the SQL query that you want to present and click on this checkbox here, make this query available in the search menu and click OK. And then we click on the search menu, you can see that the SQL query is now available there. So wherever you are in the application, if we're in the service desk, and we click search, cause log for me, uh, by me last year, we'll get taken directly to that and the SQL query is run. Um, so that's database searches, you can put your SQL queries in there. Um, as long as the SupportWorks APIs can um, translate the query correctly, then you should be fine. Uh, if you're an uh, MS SQL user, so if you put your SupportWorks application data on MS SQL, then the APIs don't translate the MS SQL, uh, some specific MS SQL queries as well. But um, obviously you can do that with trial and error, it's not going to cause you any problems. Uh, one uh, interesting little shortcut that you've got with SupportWorks um, to do with retrieving data and viewing SQL queries um, is if you hold down the Control and Shift keys when you click on the search button in various areas of the application, you actually get a dialog box which tells you the SQL query that it's going to run. So obviously we've got the date field as epoch here, which obviously is part of the SQL query we put in as variables, so you can see exactly what's being presented to um, to the API to run the query. Um, and it gives you an option to execute it or not. So in this case, you click no if it's not correct, and then you can go back in, shift and control, search, and then execute the query, and it'll run the query as you want. That is actually available in other areas of the application as well. So if I wanted to see customers with the name of Steve, but I want to see what SQL it's generating, if you hold down shift and control there and click shift now, it'll show me the SQL first and give me the option to run it or not. So if I want to run that, click yes, and it will return me all customers with the name of Steve. Right, okay, um, that's everything from me for today. Thank you very much for joining the and the Hornbill Academy session today. And um, if we have any questions, we'll look to get them answered now for you. Thank you very much, Steve. We have had a, a few questions in, so um, apologies. We've only obviously got 10 minutes left. I don't want to eat into everybody's sort of probably lunch break, um, but we'll get through as many as possible. If we don't get through them all, we will obviously follow up with the individuals um, and um, make sure that they are all answered. 
So just to, to make a start, um, building reports appears to require an in-depth knowledge of the database, its structure and content. If your first example you referred to a stated value of 16 and 6, etc., without knowing these in advance, is there some um, is there anywhere to view this type of data with user-friendly values, or is the only way to do some analysis within the database? Um, you can. You don't particularly need to do analysis in the database to see which calls have got which status really. What you can do if you go to community.hornbill.com uh, and do a search for call status in there, the uh, the call status numbers and their corresponding um, status string are listed in there. So you can you can have a look on the, the community portal and, and all that information is there for you. Thank you. I also, um, when I post the recorded link on the forum and, and send the email out, I will try and include the CCP um, link um, included so that you have that for reference as well, everybody. Um, so on to the next question. Can you create copy of the custom HTML report so you can edit or will or see the filter criteria? You can create copies of them. Um, the files that the, um, the custom HTML reports are located in are uh, obviously on your support work server. You can't copy the, the reports from the management information and reporting section of the client. So you do require um, knowledge of the support works file structure to go and do that. Um, if you, um, I'm not entirely sure that is on the community report, but if I can provide anybody with that information that requires that information after this session. Perfect, thank you. Do you have to input the full name when you apply a filter on looking at the custom made report? Sorry, can you just repeat that question on that? Yep, certainly. Do you have to input the full name when you apply a filter on looking at the custom made report? Uh, the, the full name for the filter, so would that is that from a perspective of the, the full name of the, the, um, the table and column name from the um, um, from the database, or is that as part of the actual um, clause? So, if you're doing a, a like against the or against the database, um, I think we need to, to go into that question a bit more. I'll probably need to speak to the person who's requested that one. And I'll, yeah, sorry, uh, I think he's just added some more information, um, which says, um, or can you just use part of a name in regards to Alan Castle name used? Could you search by oh, his right, surname sorry. or surname? <laughs> So if we do, if we have a look at the report that we created, um, look at me, look at last year's report. If we pop in Alan, we get no results found. I think if we pop in Alan with a wildcard. Yeah, fortunately that doesn't work. The filters are actually unfortunately a full name, so you can't actually wildcard that, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, obviously any more clarification, do obviously let us know. Um, for scheduled system reports, is there any way of emailing the report on the first day of the month? Um, we can email, if we have a look at the schedule that we've got here. What we can do, is not particularly the first day, but you can do the first day of the week of the report. So if you're doing a report once a month, then you can specify it to run on the first Monday of the month, but not on the first of the month, unfortunately. If you did want to do a report on the first of the month, then you can actually add a schedule. So you run the report once only, oh, sorry, once, uh, once every year. Uh, no, once only would be the best way to do that, actually and specify the first day of the month. So if you specify 1st of May and OK that, and then you would add another schedule, once only, on the 1st of April. Obviously you need to complete the rest of the details and you'd have a complete schedule there of all the reports, uh, of all when that report is going to be run. Fab, thank you. Um, next question is, how do you add a filter for tickets logged in the last X amount of days? Um, right, okay. Um, the filter that we've got in this report. So if open call.logdatex is greater than and what you can do here is you may have to do a calculation for the number of days um, depending on the database that you're presenting this to. 
um, there's 86,400 seconds in a day. So if you wanted to do the last three days, for instance, then you would. Um, so you've got that many seconds in three days. So log data text um, is greater than ooh, weather filter. Um, Sorry, my mind's gone completely blank. <laughs> um, I will, I will put that filter together and I'll email it as soon as we come off this call. Excellent, thank you. Um, next one is, how do you add a filter to report on the first time fix flag? Um, the first time fix, we have, uh, we've got a new call clause. We've got open call dot. The flag first time fix and is equal to a runtime a user defined value of one. And if we apply the edit, so we will um, flag first time fix. If it's equal to one, then we'll return that data. Excellent, thank you. Um, we have a couple more if we can squeeze them in. Um, is there anywhere you can see what the valid filter criteria is for use in where builder? i.e. understanding perimeters like start of year last sorry start of last year would be really useful. Yes, they're all on the uh, community portal. So if you if you visit community.hornwell.com and if you do a search for standard context variables, there's a couple of pages on there that contain all of the context variables that you can use in the reporting as well as in database um, searches and other areas of the application as well. Excellent, thank you. I think we have time for one more. I'm trying to squeeze it in. What is the capability for displaying report stats live on a TV screen? We're currently manually having to update a Google presentation with our open call status, which isn't great. Um, yeah, there is a, an application that comes bundled with SupportWorks called Dashboard. Um, there's other dashboards that are available within SupportWorks as well. Um, if we just take a quick look. This is the latest version of the support workers application and, and server. So if we look at the dashboard and trending engine, and this is something that's available in support works 7.6.2. And when this loads, um, you can essentially you can put all your metrics into a dashboard now, and this dashboard will refresh to uh, a given time period of whatever you specify. There is actually going to be another Hornbill Academy session specifically on the dashboard and trending engine. I'm not sure the date that's going to be specified for yet, but um, one of my colleagues will be taking everybody through how to build a dashboard from scratch within this engine. Excellent, thank you. And like Sue said, we will be communicating future Hornbill Academy dates shortly, so make sure you look out for them. Um, I think that is all the time we have for, and I think we have managed to go through most of the questions. If anyone um, does feel like they haven't necessarily um, had their question answered or, or needs a bit more detail, obviously feel free to email myself or contact your relationship manager and we'll make sure that um, either Steve answers that or someone else within the team. Um, we will make the recording available um, on the customer forum and the Support Works YouTube channel shortly. Um, and I will try and include the link to the CCP um, for reference as well. But I'd just like to thank everybody for their time today. Thank you, Steve. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on next week's webinar on BPM. Thank you.